The pitcher's value to his team is determined by how well he can outsmart a variety of batters and base runners. To do this effectively, a pitcher must study the opposing players for weaknesses and then apply this knowledge in relation to the many tactical and strategic situations which occur during the game. A pitcher first checks the defense, then takes the catcher's signal from the rubber. In the windup, the foot is angled across the pitching rubber with the front spikes on the ground. This position permits the pitcher to pivot and push off from the rubber. In taking the wind-up position, the ball is hidden from the batter. It is also hidden when the hands meet overhead. One or two loose arm swings are usually employed to vary the pitching motion. By stepping slightly to the side, the pitcher can deliver the ball on a direct line to the plate. This helps control. A step back starts the wind-up. Watch the pitcher catch the return throw from the catcher in his glove hand to avoid injuring his pitching hand. In an overhand delivery, the trunk and shoulder go down for a good follow-through. The shoulder dips to start a sidearm delivery. The arm swings parallel to the ground. It is best to concentrate on three basic pitches, the fastball, the curve ball, and the slow ball. A fastball is rolled from the ends of the fingers, therefore it spins up. The arm swings directly forward and the wrist breaks down. The hand rotates forward and down for a curve, thus causing the ball to spin down and to the side. A curve ball is spun from the hand with a roll of the wrist. For the best results, the wrist and fingers must be relaxed in the first part of the delivery. Now watch for the wrist action. Normally, a curve is only effective when low and away from the batter. Usually, a slow ball is a half-speed fastball or curve. One theory advises throwing the ball from a deep position in the hand with stiff wrist action. This motion is sometimes compared to pulling down a blind. Another theory recommends a regular grip with normal wrist action. A longer step and a drag with the back foot also helps, for it retards the action. Control of a slow ball can be practiced with a target. Here's another shot. Note that the pitcher aims for the lower edge of the target, since a slow ball is only effective when low. Now observe this curve. Notice that the strike zone is outlined by the cord. The catcher gives a target low outside for a right-hand batter. A left-hander's curve breaks the opposite way. Here's another shot of the action. The catcher's target is low outside for a left-hand batter. This is another curve. A slow ball or curve must be kept low to all batters. Fastballs can be high or low depending on the batter, but the curve is only effective when low. To prevent a successful sacrifice, the pitcher throws a high fastball. This also applies for a squeeze play. The pitcher starts his delivery while looking toward third. If the runner breaks, a short windup is taken and the ball is pitched high inside to stop the play. To counteract a steal of home, the same strategy is used, 
but the ball is thrown low inside for the catcher's tag. There is a variety of pitch outs. To intentionally walk a batter, the catcher gives an intentional pass signal. The pitcher checks the runners, then delivers high and wide of the plate. For pitch outs to pick a runner off base, the pitch is usually the same as for an intentional pass. Here the play is to first base. If the batter might obstruct the throw, the pitch is high inside. This play is to third base. It is important to get in front of a batted ball. The pitcher always spins toward his glove hand to throw. To hold a runner on base, a set pitching position is used. The feet are angled so that the runner can be conveniently watched. The hands must be held in the stationary position for one second before pitching. To alter this position, the rear foot must be lifted back. The hands must remain stationary during the back off. Pitchers may throw to first base after the hands reach the set position. However, a right-hander can throw more effectively before the hands reach the pitching position. A snap throw is best for the pickoff. A hop on the rear foot helps to execute the turn. Pitchers have to step toward a base when making a throw. Note the slow leg swing of this left-hander. Fast leg action is another means to combat the runner. The fast action scares the runner back and often sets him up for a definite pickoff. Here is another left-hander. Note his slow leg action in this throw to first. A left-hander usually makes his throw while looking toward the plate. The pickoff at second base works best with the shortstop. A fake or bluff pickoff enables the shortstop to get into the proper position to make the play. Here the shortstop maneuvers into position and gives the signal. The pitcher answers, then throws on a specific count. Another tactic is called the daylight method. In this case, the pitcher spins the opposite way when the shortstop breaks, unless a count is used. This shows the shortstop establishing the daylight. The pitcher whirls and throws when he sees the shortstop break. In a variation of the previous play, the shortstop fades, then breaks. The pitcher watches the shortstop for the fade and break. The shortstop and second baseman can also double team the runner. The pitcher watches for the shortstop to pass in front of the runner, then throws to the second baseman. In covering first base, the approach is important. On a hard hit ball away from the line, the pitcher goes straight to the bag. The straight approach must also be made when the first baseman cannot return to the bag. Now observe a left-hander cover 
on the same type of ball. A left-hander often shifts his feet after reaching the bag. When a ball goes near the foul line, the pitcher circles into the bag. The first baseman's toss is taken while running over the bag. Note the bag is tagged with the right foot to avoid contact with the runner. When the first baseman holds a runner on the bag, the pitcher makes the same approach. The first baseman feels the ball close to the bag so has only to make a short toss to the pitcher. These points about pitching technique and strategy can be applied on any ball field. By practicing and perfecting them, a player can improve himself and become more valuable to his team.